Uh, I guess we can start. Or do it? Okay, cool. Uh, so, uh, I am uh, Argesh Machinch and I am a technical evangelist at uh, Microsoft here in Latvia. And uh, I guess uh, some of you have questioned what technical evangelists are. And uh, I'm responsible uh, for uh, community events for uh, or platform developers uh, also and our student engagements and uh, startup projects in Latvia. And uh, I'm here with uh, Valdis. Hello. So my name is Valdis St. Charles. Um, I'm really close to the Microsoft, but I'm not the employee. So I'm a C Sharp MVP, which means that uh, Microsoft okay. thinks that I understand C Sharp and I can talk about it freely. But uh, the difference with me and uh, I guess that I can freely express my opinions about Microsoft products without like penalty or <laughs> anything else. So I can freely, subjectively express my opinion about it. Yeah, and uh, our topic today is uh, Windows uh, Azure and uh, how it uh, works together with uh, different technology stacks uh, and uh, or, or demos uh, which we will show and which are most part of our presentation uh, will show uh, Azure working with uh, different open source technologies which I think in this conference are pretty widely uh, represented. So back to basics. Uh, we are covering a technology called Windows Azure Service Bus and uh, if you go back to the like definition what the service bus actually is. Uh, uh, we, can, we can think of service as an autonomous some kind of program or service or whatever. So if we are programmers, by, by the way, how many programmers are here? So everything understands what the service means, right? So that's something uh, isolated. And uh, on, the same, on the same way, a uh, bus is something that, like the highway or something similar. We can set the vehicle, so we can actually set the message to be sent at some. And the Windows Azure uh, service bus is uh, kind of, if we are taking uh, the like definition of the service bus, it's actually uh, just a part of the counterpart called enterprise service bus. And this enterprise, this small e-letter, uh, is actually not really present in this particular Windows Azure service bus. It's more or less like really transport level. We can set the message, we can set all the various like models we will quickly go through, but it's really like a delivery mechanism, like the transport. And this enterprise thingy like, uh, I don't know, the mappings or, or taxonomy of the messages and all that stuff is, you have to like choose another Microsoft product or product, like implement <coughs> that and, and bring to the enterprise. So the use case, the usual use case, and that's from the like personal experience. We don't have um, the same e-commerce site, right? And uh, of course, there is uh, some kind of shipping service or order service or ERP system or whatever. It's like backend stuff, legacy stuff, written in some fancy programming languages usually, and it's not really like modern, and it's like hardly upgraded and can't keep this modern trend um, on the same level. And on the same time, we do have some front ends where there's like fancy UI interfaces, all that the e-commerce stuff, which you can just push in the orders and, and, and like it's usually not the same AFS system. It's like some kind of front end stuff built on top of that. And usually uh, the worst case is that front end services are actually talking directly to the back end systems. And if the like uh, the load of the site goes up, that would be some potential problems, and that's influencing all the related systems like high loads and the API system just goes down, and I'm not able to handle that all that stuff, which is like closely coupled. So it goes out that the drivers which have to deliver the uh, packages are not happy, so ERP system is not happy, and at the same time store and front end is not happy because it probably is not able to make the orders, etc. Et so one of the case which we can use the Azure Web Services is we are making so-called loosely couple applications. So we do have the same front end, we have the same ERP system, and we're just putting into those systems in between the service buses, or in this case, particular order queue. And with the order queue, uh, we can just uh, make the order the same way as we are 
making orders before them, but we are actually not talking directly to the API system, but we are talking to the service bus. We are saying, okay, this is the message, this is the order, I want those two laptops or, or new Xbox or whatever, and I'm actually putting the message on the queue and not talking directly to the API system. It's like standard way of how uh, the service bus can be used. And you would ask what kind of benefits if I put inside or in between those systems another level of abstraction. It's like increased complexity, all that stuff. But there's also a set of benefits we can uh, gain from that uh, scenario. First of all, queues means that that's uh, guaranteed delivery. So if I put the message in the queue, it's guaranteed that that particular endpoint or receiver or whatever will receive that message. And particularly of the queues is that this is FIFO or first in first out. So if I put one message and another one, it will be delivered in the same order. So there are, there are cases when this is really important. So that's uh, guaranteed. Loosely coupled, so we see that uh, actually front end is not talking directly to the API system, but that's loosely coupled. So we can increase the scale on the front end, we can increase or decrease scale on the back end and so So those are disconnected systems more or less. Another case, we, we are gaining interoperability. So it means that client or store front end could be written in one language in one platform. EAP system could be written in totally a different language. And for the service bus, there is adapters for the PHP, Java, all those languages. And it's really like you can talk to almost any system. Or if there is no uh, library, you can actually call service bus via REST interface. It's like just a HTTP client, more or less. So that's really nice. And also, of course, as, as it comes from the, uh, all of the Azure services, it's low cost maintenance. Just really, I guess we'll show how easily it's really create a service bus with the wizard like in Microsoft style uh, way. You just click, click, next, next, and you have a service bus uh, in your infrastructure. So uh, the queues on the service bus is just one of the models. We have queues, which is one-to-one -one chat, so to call. Uh, we have topics, which is publisher, subs publisher and subscribing uh, architecture pattern, which I'm as a sender just saying, okay, I received the order system uh, application over there. There could be a lot of receivers out there. So it's uh, also guaranteed delivery, which are subscribed, those are actually received the message. And uh, there is a lot of customization. You can say that, okay, if this is order X or order for that particular customer, it goes to only for those subscribers. So there's filtering mechanism in really like a uh, customizable way, if it's really needed. Relay is interesting stuff when you have on-premise system behind the corporate firewall and you are not able to open anything, but you want somebody to talk to your system or you want to listen to something, you're creating relay queues, which means that there is somewhere the agent out there which is working on behalf of you. And if something is delivered for you or you want to say, send something, it's the guy who will make happen that. So it's really awesome, really cool. And the most interesting is the latest part, which is notification hub, and that's uh, used for the mobile uh, mobile infrastructures. Uh, the case is, if you want to send the notifications on many platforms, like Android, iOS, etc., there's different protocols and way how you should be like thinking and implementing those guys. With the notification hubs, you just, as a sender, you put one message, and service bus or this in infrastructure in the Windows Azure, Azure will take care of sending the the precise message to that particular platform, taking into account what kind of message should be sent, what protocol should be used, and etc. So that's out of the box, just notification hub. And of course, Microsoft slowly is moving to the openness, and it means that great stuff. <laughs> so it means that it's not only .NET Framework and Windows Azure. Actually, it's called Windows. Azure service bus, but actually it could be hosted on the premise. So for instance, if you have a large enterprise scale system, so you want to like some loosely couple them and kind of pretend that you have ESB system and architecture, you can actually install it on the premise. 
It's not only the Azure. And also, it's not only the framework, as I mentioned. Of course, the, the primary client is written in, in a framework, in a managed code, but there is a lot of adapters, like PHP, Java, all that stuff. And it's, a, and it's not only the HTTP. So there's a TCP and, and uh, various things as well. OK, uh, so uh, I would uh, first of all, I would like to hand out a tablet which has a uh, part of demo for uh, which I will show later. It's a it's simple app uh, which, you can, which you can use to send a message to Queen and send receive message from Queen by pressing button. So hopefully you won't use receive uh, too much uh, when I will be showing demo using other parts because it uses the same Queen. Or so you can send a message and without uh, kind of, maybe it will be shown up in a uh, big screen. If you won't be too bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> first of all, I would like to show you Windows Azure. I will do that in a correct way, hopefully. Uh, starting from uh, logging in and uh, seeing what happens there. Oh. And uh, my demo first will be uh, creating a service bus, uh, which will be just for sake of uh, showing how to create it and uh, how it uh, looks. Because in demos, I will use uh, pre existing ones made so that it will be faster and uh, there won't be any time lose on uh, acquiring server resources and uh, spinning up uh, machines for that. So, and after that, uh, I will try to create uh, some uh, Linux virtual machine. It was, uh, for preparing this demo, it was actually very much fun because uh, I have never kind of worked much with Linux. In my life, I'm pretty much a Microsoft guy, so it was a bit of a uh, challenge. Also, some command line stuff. So, we have here uh, all available uh, Azure services, uh, which includes uh, PaaS offering, platform as service, and also EAS offering, which is uh, infrastructure as service, namely it would be uh, virtual machines or uh, some network stuff. So we can create namespace, which will be, I guess, wildcard would be school name. Cool. And place it in uh, North Europe, which will be in uh, Dublin. And, uh, or West Europe, which will be in uh, Amsterdam, I think. <laughs> so it's somehow weird. Uh, <laughs> Because in my mind, uh, West Euro Dublin is more west than uh, Amsterdam. Yeah. Uh, so, on the service bus uh, namespace which we created here, we can have all these uh, kind of kinds of uh, service bus uh, messaging uh, platforms: queens, uh, topics, relays, and notification hubs. Uh, I will show in the beginning notification hub, which hopefully will do it <laughs> in time. Uh, yeah. So here we can actually upload our SSL certificates or uh, keys which we get from uh, different providers for these uh, mobile platforms from uh, Google, uh, uh, Apple, and uh, Windows Phone, where we can. Uh, just then uh, set them up and use this platform to send messages. I will show it on configure some kind of la la la. Here we have for Apple and uh, for Google. Also for my beloved uh, Windows Phone and the Windows 8 uh, notification. <laughs> but uh, our main topic is Queen. And uh, with Queens, uh, there was uh, somehow gotcha which you need to learn, and I learned it hard way, uh, that uh, on a configure level you can uh, set uh, so restrictions and access policies for this queen, so that uh, you can limit uh, what uh, can kind of with each key uh, and uh, username and key, what users can do. And uh, I created this metro uh, key uh, to send a listen, but uh, and I tried to use that in my first demo application, which were written in C Sharp, and it worked nicely. Then I tried to do, use the same key uh, for 
RESTful uh, interfaces on PHP or uh, on uh, Java using MQP and uh, it somehow failed because it didn't work and they did, really didn't understand why. But uh, in the end actually it turned out that uh, I needed just used a bit higher level keys which is shown uh, for service bus. Here is connection information. We also have the same uh, kind of username uh, part and uh, key here which you can use to access and uh, secure platform. And uh, so, next, okay, so we have our uh, namespace VC setup and we have there our queen which is named uh, wild. Yeah. And it has one message uh, in the bus, so someone has sent it here. <laughs> And uh, then uh, what I did next, from a uh, perspective, I, let's assume that I need to create a virtual machine where I will put uh, my Java Tomcat server and uh, Linux. I have, as you can see, I have created one already, but uh, yeah, mm. I can press new uh, virtual machine uh, from gallery. And uh, there is uh, somehow a uh, library of uh, prepared virtual machines. Uh, kind of all platform you can see is natural Windows machines and so on, but also some uh, Linux and Ubuntu machines. But uh, there is also an opportunity so that you can get images which are pre made by some companies or partners. And uh, there I found uh, this image with Ubuntu on Tomcat server on it. On it. So I created a uh, Machine, uh, virtual machine using that because so that uh, I don't have to bother me with learning how to install Tomcat on uh, Ubuntu. Uh, nice. Okay. I guess some resolution problem. <laughs> uh, when, when we are creating a virtual machine, we need to upload the SSL certificate, which will be used uh, as a way of identifying you when you are connecting to virtual machine uh, using uh, SSH uh, protocol. And uh, so I also needed to learn how to create that on Windows uh, using OpenSSL. So I had to download some uh, emulator of Linux, uh, which allowed me to do that. Uh, and I used the GitHub version for that. So when I have this uh, virtual machine, I can connect to it uh, using, uh, I don't know, in my case, as uh, I am very sort of Windows guy, I choose to use uh, Windows CP or I can use Putty. Uh, on Windows platform, and I guess, and here I have my defined settings for the already set up uh, virtual machine, and it will be uh, because I have here set up my uh, SSC uh, certificate, uh, so that it authenticates using certificate, uh, which I used also to upload when I created a virtual machine. So right now I'm in this. Uh, a virtual machine I'm connected to it but uh, kind of uh, this is not the nicest way for me for me to work because I'm not so customized with uh, Linux command line so I will use Windows CP for that and uh, I also need to edit this connection because uh, it needs to have uh, administrator privileges and to do that, it, uh, in Linux you use this command sudo to gain administrator privileges. And so without that I would not be able to copy any files from my Windows system to uh, Tomcat uh, web apps directory. So I'm here, I, here you can see some web apps which are created and uh, on Azure side we have a uh, Endpoints uh, where I created endpoint for uh, eight, eight, eighteenth port, which is uh, HTTP uh, port, and uh, with that I can go to site which is called uh, Wild Card Cloud App Net. Cloud App Net uh, in Windows Azure sense means that it's virtual machine, and uh, you, you can see this nice uh, picture here, and uh, I will try to show. Uh, in Eclipse code, uh, what we have here. So I have this here some Eclipse code, uh, how to call service bus using MQP, but uh, we somehow didn't manage to get our serverless working <laughs> for it. 
so we have only index uh, GSP working uh, that uh, is like front end interface, and in all our demos, actually, I created the same HTML for it and JavaScript. So it uh, creates kind of it, it has the same interface as app, which I'm giving uh, around you, and uh, you can send message or uh, uh, or uh, receive messages, but uh, unfortunately. Uh, and I didn't manage to get working uh, plumbing part for uh, JavaScript, uh, Java, but I will show that uh, on uh, PHP demo. I also created uh, one simple website which uses PHP, and uh, on Azure you can you don't need actually to have virtual machine to host PHP file. You can use uh, websites for that and host it in the same environment as you would host uh, traditional ASP net page. Uh, but it's uh, but you need to keep in mind that it's. Uh, ES server, not uh, Apache server, so you don't have uh, these uh, Apache server specific uh, things like HTT access and so on. Uh, um, yeah, so but this, you, don't, you don't have this HTTP access and uh, all the rewrite from that. Uh, so I created here wildcard var file and I will try to upload it and uh, hopefully. If it works fine, then uh, here we will see. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, he will. We will see a different website. No. Uh, so. Wow. Card. No. Yeah. Or maybe. Oh yes. Nice. So uh, we have here uh, our uh, JSP page uh, from our, our uh, Eclipse project, and uh, in Eclipse idea was to show uh, how uh, uh, it uses MQP protocol. I downloaded <laughs> MQP libraries from uh, Apache uh, site and uh, jars, uh, and I get managing. Uh, I get working prototype of a console application, but then I wanted to transfer that to web application, but. Uh, I got somehow lost in glue with uh, several at configuration because it was not working. Uh, and so I won't be able to show that from here. But uh, at the same time, I also created as backup uh, or no, wrong. Uh, I created a which, uh, website with PHP and uh, I used the uh, yeah, wildcard. And uh, this website uh, I actually used to edit from uh, our tool, which is called uh, Webmetrics. Uh, there you can have some something like ID for uh, very simple and uh, basic use. And uh, I created there this uh, front end page, which has JavaScript, which basically on button clicks uh, sends message to itself to some other pages, and uh, in the backend, then this uh, PHP page uses uh, RESTful interface to send message to uh, Azure service bus. And uh, for RESTful calls, you need to take in mind that the first call needs to be made for authentication because it uses OAuth protocol. So and first, uh, you send your uh, username and password, and you receive token, which you can use later on for uh, further communication. And the first call here is uh, this in PHP, I guess this is this line, which uh, sends request uh, with these parameters uh, here to and it gets the token and then we can just call simple method like post here uh, to push method to service bus screen and, uh, to get method from service bus screen uh, we use uh, delete method because uh, and so it also deletes but uh, on uh, rest interface you also have ability to create a peak uh, look so that you don't delete the head of uh, queen but you just uh, look what it is, if there is anything and so on. But you also need to take into account that uh, when you are doing something with service bus, each call to service bus uh, is billable. So that means uh, if you are taking a call and there is nothing in service bus, you are also billed for that. It's still counted in. Uh, so, and uh, yeah. So, uh, how much time do I have? Uh, so for demo purposes, I uh, have here opened this uh, PHP site. 
and uh, I can try to write. Maybe I can actually look what you have sent uh, if you have not uh, pulled out our message which you uh, sent here. Ah, we already did. We checked. Does it work? <laughs> it works. Okay, so I, ho I hope that Nothing you. Nothing left on the queue. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, can you see the bill? How much yeah. did we spend? At the, month, at the end of the month. <laughs> <laughs> as a surprise. Like. Uh, so, uh, for me, as a, actually, I have my last experience with PHP was, I guess, so right now I guess six seven years uh, <laughs> and uh, with Java it was uh, four years and before that it was not great the experience it was more like uh, something at school <laughs> some chat client uh, using uh, this uh, so it was kind of I don't have great experience with these platforms and uh, PHP uh, demo I created in one day uh, with Java I spent a bit more time with configuring Eclipse uh, because I downloaded vanilla version and it was not ready for web development, uh, so I needed to find li uh, libraries and so on. Uh, so, okay, I will say. Oh. Okay, I will reload. Okay, so who is stealing messages from me? Oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and uh, on websites, uh, I implemented uh, with timeouts mm, that it uh, pulls messages all each five seconds uh, from website. Uh, so, but uh, and but front end code is essentially the same in both platforms. Uh, the only part was the difference in back end. And uh, also made the uh, code in C sharp. I can uh, show how kind of big is the uh, code of application which I'm showing to you. And uh, essentially, uh, it's like, I would say this, uh, which is uh, we create queen uh, with connection string, which is defined a bit uh, on top as property, uh, hard coded <laughs> here. And uh, then we send uh, just an um, async method through pipe, and uh, then we await for it. It's uh, using asynchronous uh, programming model. Uh, which I could go in a bit longer talk about what it is and so on, but uh, it's not the purpose of this demo. But uh, on, yes, answer is yes. Uh, Git is supported on uh, Azure, uh, and uh, actually you can create a continuous integration using Git uh, on, for example, PHP or .NET, whatever you are using, uh, so that you just simply push it to, to Git uh, repository, and uh, then it uh, pushes it to uh, kind of production environment. Uh, so, what else? Uh, I guess then we can uh, move to, or, if, or maybe you have, okay, slides. So maybe somebody has some concerns about the performance. If, yes. Yes. if okay. Consumer and the sender is actually connected to the Azure and going back and etc. So of course it doesn't come for free. And there is some kind of performance implications, I would call. But uh, usually the average test what might should have been made is uh, 2,000 messages per second, and the message size is one kilobyte. So if it's just a free text, there could be some significant information which could be uh, enough. And the average average latency is uh, 100 milliseconds. So it doesn't come for free, of course. But if, if you are counting the other benefits, it's kind of option we can consider. Yeah. The latency is that per message, then? Yep. Average. And what is the, what is the latency? Where is the latency? Between what to what? It's latency when you the consumer or uh, sender just puts the message on the queue. It's the, the network latency. Okay. But it's the average. Okay, inter okay so internet latency is like yes. it's taken into account yep. as well. Yep. As well. Okay. But if this was running not in the cloud, but rather hosted in your environment? If it's on the on-premise, then it's yeah. up to network infrastructure. Yeah. But it's like, usually it's like intense latency. It's a 10 milliseconds even in the Azure. It's really fast. And for the pricing, yeah. As I just mentioned, it's, and not for free, of course, it's my right? 
And um, <laughs> just take the knife on your back. So it's less than uh, one cent for the ten thousand messages. Yeah. And you should just keep in mind if if I'm picking all the time the empty queue, it's anyway subject to billing. Mm -hmm. So there is some packages going to the network, coming back, even if it's queues uh, empty. It's subject for billing, and there can be surprises at the end of the month. And uh, also, a thing you need to take into consideration is that each message uh, and also default size for message is uh, 64 kilobytes. So that means if you have a message which is bigger, it's not truncated, but it sends us two yeah. messages. Yeah. Yeah. It's split up. Yeah. So you send one kilobyte, uh, one megabyte, and it's cost zero. And uh, about SLA. How much it's available? Does for the service bus apply the same SLA as yes. for Windows Azure in general? Yes, yes. Uh, so if service bus is not working, we are paying you your money back for the amount which you would spend on service bus. Yeah. So if, if it's on premise, then it's yeah, it's the cost. Uh, um, so. so. Um, all right. Yeah. You can just use the, the message queuing, right? You don't need to have any other applications hosted. Mm -hmm. with no, that. no. Mm, in kind of in our case, we have two hosted applications, which if we, they both would work, then we would have these web applications. But uh, this uh, modern UI app, which you are seeing, it's not hosted, so no problem, no implications at all. Yeah. App. And uh, you can have your own infrastructure communicating using this. So the only cost that I incur will be the sending the message. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You don't pay it for you know, a machine or any type of hosting. You're right? paying only for messages. Just for messages. Yeah, using this, uh, because this is a platform, a service uh, yeah. solution, so it's uh, for you're paying more for this technical solution. For the service. Yeah, not for uh, infrastructure behind it, in direct way. So, but if you would like to host it in your, on your window, virtual machines, then you would have to pay for it. All right, thank you. Thank you, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.